click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends we have seen the basic analysis of convection now in this topic we are going to look at the summary of the same in the summary of convection heat transfer we started with the basic definition so in the basic definition we talked about the various definition that we have studied in fluid dynamics in case of flow direction if the flow is a single degree flow or 2 degree or 3 degree so basically we talked about various types of flow and the types of heat transfer rate so this is what we have seen in the basic definition similarly in the next topic we talked about the differential equation of heat convection so the general equation that we got was alpha do square t by do x square plus do square t by do y square is equal to u do t by do x plus v do t by do y so this was the general equation that we have got where the alpha was nothing but the thermal diffusivity and to the left hand side we have got the second order differential for temperature t and to the right hand side we have got the first order differential for the temperature t where u indicates the velocity in x direction and v indicates the velocity in y direction we have seen the derivation of the same and then the various limitations or the assumptions which are required for this derivation the next topic which we talked about was newton's law of cooling i hope all of you know that the newton's law of cooling says that the heat transfer rate is directly proportional to the change in temperature and the surface area the proportionality constant was replaced by h where h is nothing but the heat transfer coefficient so then we talked about this h has a local value and then a global value or they call it as a average value so the heat transfer coefficient the heat transfer coefficient can be a local or average so when you are talking about a small point then for that small point the value is a local value or else the value will be a average or a global value then later we talked about the boundary layer concept where we previously were aware of the velocity boundary layer then we talked about the thermal boundary layer and then we discuss about the relationship between the velocity boundary layer and then the thermal boundary layer we have seen that if the prandtl number is 1 in that case my velocity boundary layer coincides with that of the thermal boundary layer the next topic that we discuss about the dimensionless analysis this topic itself arises because of the limitation of the value of h to find the local heat transfer coefficient or for that matter the average heat transfer coefficient the number of variables are quite high so we have seen the number of variables were like diameter then the density of the fluid mu that is the dynamic viscosity then the cp value was there now cp here is nothing but the specific heat then we talked about the thermal conductivity so basically if i want to find out the heat transfer rate then the heat transfer rate depends on these many parameters now if i want to solve simultaneously various general equation for these many parameter then it makes a tedious job so to simplify that they have come up with a different approach they call this approach is nothing but the dimensionless analysis wherein we try to club few of the variables and then form a non dimensionless number so for this we try to understand what is buckingham pi theorem so buckingham pi theorem says if there are n number of independent variables and m number of fixed variable then you can form the pi terms which are equal to n minus m 
So later we try to apply the same non-dimensionless analysis to the force convection and we have found out that Nusselt number can be a function of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. So later we have discussed and said that this can be written as Nusselt number as some constant into the Reynolds number raised to A and Prandtl number raised to B. Before this understanding, we need to figure it out what is Nusselt number. So Nusselt number is nothing but the thermal resistance offered by the convection to the thermal resistance offered by the conduction. So at the end we get the formula as HL upon K, where H is heat transfer coefficient, L is the characteristic length, K is the thermal conductivity. Similarly, Prandtl number is nothing but the momentum diffusivity upon the thermal diffusivity. And then the formula that we got was mu Cp upon K. Then the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is something that we have studied previously in the fluid dynamics. It is nothing but the ratio of two forces. One is the viscous force and the other one is inertial force. So it's a ratio of inertial force to the viscous force. And the formula for the same that we have got was rho Vd upon mu. Similarly, later we talked about the free convection. The equation that we have got for the free convection was the Nusselt number in this case is a function of, in the previous case we had the Reynolds number, here the Reynolds number will be replaced by the Grashof number. So we can write this as GR raised to A and PR raised to B. So this was the general equation that we have found by the dimensionless analysis. And then the Grashof number that we have got can be written as G beta delta T L cube upon nu square. So whatever the work that the Reynolds number does in case of a force convection, similar analogous work is done by the Grashof number in a free convection. Grashof number is nothing but the ratio of Boyne force and inertial force upon the square of viscous force. Then we talk about the Rayleigh's number. The Rayleigh's number is nothing but the product of Grashof number and Prandtl number. This number is invented just for the sake of simplicity in a analysis. Then we have come up with the Reynolds analogy where Reynolds analogy says that CFG is nothing but twice of as per the Reynolds analogy we have found that this CFG where CFG is nothing but coefficient of friction drag is nothing but twice of some number. Now what is this sum number? This sum number is nothing but the standard number. Where standard number can be indicated as ST. So the other way to express the same thing is standard number is equal to CFG by 2. So in this case, we try to figure out the relationship between the coefficient of friction drag or the shear stress that is there in the flow with that of the standard number. Then we talked about the basic mechanism of natural convection. We have seen that if there is a change in temperature, that causes the change in density. And this change in density will in turn cause the buoyant force. It is a buoyant force that is responsible for the natural convection. Then we talked about volumetric coefficient of volumetric expansion, that is beta. We have seen this beta is nothing but 1 upon density dou rho by dou t with the negative sign. So here this talks about how does the density changes with respect to time per unit density when the pressure is constant. So the important condition for this is that the pressure need to be remain constant. This is essential 
to know how efficient is the natural convection for a given fluid. Then there were so many correlationship that we talk about. The correlationships are nothing but the relationship given in the various parameter which they have found with the help of experiments. Now these are always given for a certain range. So you remember that after the experiment for a particular range the correlationship will be given. In our academics there are two types. One is when the flow is external and the other one is when the flow is internal. So for the external flow we have flow over a flat plate and for the internal flow we have flow through tube or we can write down tubes or pipes. Similarly these can be given for the free convection and the force convection. So basically we have got the relationship for free convection over a flat plate and force convection over a flat plate. Similarly we have got it for the free convection inside the pipe or force convection for the flow through pipe. Now in this summary we talked about these many derivations and definitions which are essential for the analysis of convection. We have even tried to solve few typical problems based on the natural convection and the force convection. Now that is it in this topic. Thank you for watching this video. Please stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.